Wow. What a story. What a what a, an attempt and a successful attempt. Now, the big thing that I'm honestly most impressed with, unless you haven't touched on it yet, is you so far haven't mentioned any sort of um, aches and pains, really. Did your body just hold up flawlessly? Obviously, you had probably natural aches and pains, but as far as your body held, holding up, how did that How'd that work out? Yeah, it was pretty solid. I mean, I would say normal aches and pains. And, um, you know, if we we were having this conversation after the long trail, I would have a list of 10 things that I could tell you about that didn't hold up well. And I think that for me had been a huge learning experience that I was able to to use those things and luckily see that, you know, those things I I did learn from and put into play well here, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and it's as simple as just changing my socks at any inkling of needing to, Um, you know, that was a big one. Um, I spent a lot of time finding the shoes, the VJ shoes that really worked for me. And I feel like help keep my feet drier than other shoes I had worn um, on the trail. Um, And, you know, I mean, my legs were, were screaming at times. And I think like that climb up cold and that's so steady and so long, I really was kind of feeling them like, I don't know if they're going to hold up, um, you know, at this kind of an effort. But in terms of really feeling like an acute thing was going wrong, I was, I was super fortunate that, you know, we, we didn't have that. And I think um, I was, I was conservative with my pace, uh, especially in the beginning on purpose, because I just, I wanted to be super careful of, not be rolling an ankle that could cause issues later and and things like that. So, um, you know, I, I learned a lot from the long trail for sure that I think helped pay off with how I kept my body in, in decent form for this, but also, you know, the sleep deprivation side too, that hit me like a ton of bricks on the long trail and, uh, definitely dealt with it a bit better in, in the high peaks. So I was pretty happy about that. Very cool. So it seems like you learned so much on that trail, which translated here. So now hindsight, after the fact, you completed this task three days, 16 hours, 16 minutes. You set the women's FKT, supported FKT. So is there anything you would do differently? Let's say you did it again, or in hindsight now, what could you have done differently, if anything? You know, um, there's definitely places where I feel like you could play with pushing the pace and things like that. Um, You know, you could play a little bit more with kind of going until you're really needing sleep, you know, each day rather than saying this is my breaking point. And I think, you know, I think that's kind of the interesting part of this that is having, you know, to do it again and to have the opportunity to then kind of say you're you have your pacer and they have a a bivy and a um, you know, what you need to sleep. And so the sleeping would just change. Like, can you push another hour up the trail? Could you push another two hours up the trail before you need to sleep type of thing? And I'm not sure if I'm the person that really wants to do it that way. (laughs) Um, but I think it certainly could be done and you could, you could take advantage of some of the nicer weather and conditions and maybe make a little bit more leeway when you're feeling stronger by doing it that way. Um, you know, in terms of my route for, Myself, I think it was really, uh, you know, definitely the right route for me. Um, I I didn't love the fact that it was a lot of moving parts in that last day. But again, getting those extra naps and kind of being able to segment each thing into uh, a single digit countdown that I could mentally take was was really good. So not a whole lot. I think I personally would change there, but there you know, if someone wanted to be more aggressive with a route and had more experience, maybe in comfort with some bushwhacking, there's, there's absolutely, I think, some more efficient or like, you know, shorter routes, we can call it that shorter routes that are out there. Cool, cool. So I know your hike was raising money for the Patton Institute. Can you tell us a little bit about Mm -hmm. that? Sure. So um, that is a kind of a retreat. It's a cottage on Lake Champlain where they bring in writers of color every summer to write and share, you know, they, I think their only job there is to write. And um, Alice Green is the founder of it and her hope she grew, she's a black woman who grew up in the Adirondacks and her hope is that, you know, maybe they do write about the Adirondacks and share some things about the the place that they're in, but 
Um, if nothing else, they get to experience the outdoor space and maybe even just talk about it word of mouth, that kind of thing. Um, and so it is a small arm of the Center for Law and Justice, which Alice Green also founded and is, is based in Albany. And I found it through a book called Breaking Trail, Remarkable Women of the Adirondacks that has a profile on Alice. And I did quite a bit of reading about the Adirondacks and the history that's there and kind of the people that the peaks are named off about and um, just stories that have happened in those mountains and reading about the, the area was really special to me because, you know, I'm, I'm not a local to there and I wanted to kind of get a feel for the, the land that I was going to be hiking through. And I think a lot of those stories I was able to relate to and, and kind of helped me feel excited and, and welcomed into that space. And so I like the concept of, of being able to support writers of color to maybe introduce other uh, people of color to the outdoor space and just to try and make it as diverse and inclusive as we can for everyone so that we all can enjoy it. So that, that fundraiser actually went really, really well. Um, you know, if you find me on Instagram, I'll be keeping that link up for a couple of weeks at least. So, um, you know, if you did want to support or share that with your network, so it would be greatly appreciated. And um, the folks there are, are super excited about just kind of having that come in. I think it's, it's not something that gets looked at a lot. And so they can do a lot with, with that money and they're, they're really excited for it. All right. That's great. That's great. So what's next for you now that this is over? <laughs> Some rest, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Some wine. Um, so, you know, I, I have no firm plans. Um, I, I'm a firm believer in, working really hard and going all in on these big goals, but also making sure I have the time and the space to recover and not feel like I need to just jump into another project. Um, so at least, you know, in the short term, nothing, nothing is on the calendar at all. Um, you know, I'll say the, the larger picture of things is that I, I am definitely interested in doing a, a self-supported effort at something at some time. Um, so you know, I'm not sure exactly what trail that could be. I've, I've taken a lot of looks at the Tuscarora Trail, actually, which is kind of a little bit more local to me. It's, it runs from Pennsylvania to Virginia, and it's about 250 miles. So um, I think that could be kind of a good one for me to try a hand at for a self-supported attempt at something and to just, you know, continue to get comfortable in the, the mountains and the woods by myself. I certain you know I grew up camping but kind of camping in a campground and, and things like that so um being in the the wilderness and the the true woods is still something I'm I'm learning and mm -hmm. getting a feel for and but I I love it so I'm I'm trying to embrace that process and maybe be looking at something to do uh, a self-supported attempt in the next couple of years. Cool. Cool. Well, if you're looking for ideas, there's also the Northville Placid trail here in the Adirondacks, 138 miles from Northville to Lake Placid. Uh, it's on the FKT site. You can see what those times are now, but that's also a, a great trail and you know, it's a little shorter, so it might be a nice, a nice start too as well. Well, exactly. Yeah. It sounds like a good distance. <laughs> yeah. So I like to ask all of my guests that come on the show, these three questions at the end of each episode, they're just fun questions. No wrong answer. The first question, is there anything in particular that's unique to you that you always have to have in your backpack when you're out hiking? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, pro not necessarily unique to me, but I will always have candy, like hands down. I will have candy. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I always have Snickers bars in my bag. So that's, that, okay. that's for me. Yeah. I'm more jelly beans, uh, probably, but yeah, a candy, like a sweet of some kind, if you need a quick hit of sugar, then, then my pack is the place to find it. Cool. So for you, you've traveled all over the world. You've competed everywhere. Uh, what in your opinion makes the Adirondacks a unique place? I think just the community around it, like the, it's so rare to find a place like that where people seem to really appreciate that it's there and they want to get out and use it and kind of make the most of it and, and enjoy that space. You know, I think a lot of places you go, 
you find that the outdoor space built into to there is is taken for granted and a lot of the locals aren't there a lot of times and um it seems like the the Adirondacks are something that the locals are you know the roots of and they are the living and breathing being that keeps the Adirondacks alive and they you know have only welcomed me in with open arms and I've been super appreciative of that so I think it's that that community feel and um totally sets it apart oh I like that answer very much and I appreciate that and I'm glad you felt that when you when you come up to the Adirondacks um and my last question is so why do you hike and why do you compete and you know what you're putting your body through to do this is you know an incredible thing you know no one's making you do it what's the reason that you that you attempt these these long distance hikes, these races? I think that I'm very much um, in tune with the, if you see it, you can be it mentality and growing up and kind of working towards a career as a professional athlete, I was, you know, really, really inspired by women who had gone before me, who I felt like I was similar to and you know, they were able to make a career as a, as a professional athlete. And, but because I was able to see them doing it, see them putting themselves out there and seeing their successes and their failures, I felt like that was something, you know, I could do too. And I felt like it would be, it would be something worthwhile to do. And so, you know, if nothing else, if me putting myself out there for some of these crazy adventures, just plants a seed in someone else's head that they could do it too, um, then it's, it's all totally worth it. And I think, you know, especially for women to be able to see other women, um, you know, in there, I'm 35 and I'm still plugging away at these athletic goals and, um, just hope to, to inspire other people to kind of reach beyond what you think is possible. And you never know what'll happen. You might, you might get that record after all. Right. Now, where can people find you online? Instagram's probably the best place. Uh, I'm at Alyssa Gadeski, and then I have a website too, uh, alyssagadeski.com, and that has a contact me form and stuff like that. So um, not too hard to find on the internet. If you if you just search for me, you'll find me. All right, great. Well, everyone, there it is, start to finish. An absolutely amazing story and even more amazing feat what you accomplished out there, Alyssa. Alyssa Gadeski, the female-supported FKT holder for the 46 High Peaks here in the Adirondack Park, completing all 46 High Peaks in a lightning-fast 3 days, 16 hours, and 16 minutes. Completely amazing. Well, I hope you all enjoyed hearing Alyssa's race story broken down day by day. I certainly did. And check out the other episode with her friendly competitor, Sarah Kyes who was also out there at the exact same time going after the exact same record. And you can hear both of their stories and how they unfolded and get a full glimpse as to what these two badasses did out there on the trail. Thanks to all of you for listening to the 46 of 46 podcast summit session with Alyssa Gadeski. If you like the show, be sure to leave a rating or review on Apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Check back every Friday for new mountains, new stories, new guests, and new episodes here on the 46 of 46 podcast. Remember to always leave no trace, do the rock walk, and if you carry it in, carry it out. Everything, every time, banana peels and all. See you on the trails. Hey everyone, James here from the 46 of 46 podcast. Let me ask you a question. Whether you're waking up in a tent at your campsite after a long day on the trail, or you're driving to work, what's the first thing you want in the morning? Coffee. And so much of it. The new Campfire Blend Steeped Packs from Recess Coffee is exactly what you need to get your body and mind trail ready in the morning. Owned by fellow Adirondack hikers here in upstate New York, Recess Coffee's new Steeped Packs offer a no-mess, travel-friendly coffee brewing and features one of their most popular coffees, Campfire Blend. Campfire Blend is a medium roast with smoky notes of chocolate and walnut, making it a great companion for those mornings in the backcountry. Plus, their steep brewing packets are quick and easy to brew on the go, so they're perfect for when you're out on the trail or just at the office and need a taste of the trail with their campfire blend. All packaging is compostable, but you know, if you carry it in, carry it out. And you can get it by the packet or try a carton of 10. 
Recess Coffee is offering listeners 10% off their steeped packs as well as any of their blends and roasts in 12-ounce bags of whole beans with the promo code RECESS46. That's R-E-C-E-S-S-4-6. Just go to Recess.